Talk so hi David. Hi, I uh, haven't seen you for a while. It's years. So I have a several questions for you, and the first one is, uh, where did you train, and could you please give me a brief description of your training, either formal or informal, and did you have a particularly important inspirational teacher in your life, or during like your work time? Okay. I have, I consider my training to be a hybrid of theater training and visual arts training. When I was in my teens, I went to an alternative school, high school, that allowed me to take credits outside at the University of Toronto. So in grade 13, I took a, I studied theater technology at the University of Toronto Opera School. And uh, that's where I got the bulk of my theater training in set and um, some props. I decided not to go into theater at that point. I was 19 and I decided I was going to study visual arts. So I enrolled at York University in painting and dropped out a year and a half into my second year and went out to Vancouver where I trained in um, performance and installation art at the Emily Carr College of Art. From there I did an apprenticeship as a sign writer right out of art college. I was painting billboard art, I was doing all sorts of things, very performative. And at a certain point, when I was about 30, I decided to put them all together because I have always loved theater. I planned to be an actor when I was starting out. And I just thought, you know, painting pictures on a wall is too passive. I want to do something that matters, that is of service, because I have a high degree of service interest. And being in theater behind the scenes just fit the bill. I went on to do work at Banff, internship, stuff like that. But a lot of what I've done, I've learned on the job. Okay, and what's about mentors, the mentors? Mentors. Every brilliant designer I meet was a mentor in terms of, especially the ones who drafted well, like Michael Egan or Susan Benson, mm -hmm. Stratford designers, National Theater School d designers. The ones who really had great technique, I paid attention to them. The rest of them, you know, I worked with very well, and uh, but I always looked for the person who was outstanding, and then I followed what they did. Okay. Uh, yes. I'm giving you a lot of words. Yeah. I'm a talker. So, number <laughs> two, uh, what drew you, I think you answered it, what drew you to your particular area of theater, city paint? Oh, wow. Well. My father told me when I was 15 that I'd better not become a dilettante and I should learn something useful. So he handed me a paintbrush and said, paint the house. And I just took my art ability and, you know, my ability to draw and my ability to paint and I applied it to something that was all about doing large things like billboard painting and what have you. It was, net, it was a logical step to just start doing it on stage. So I always just worked mm. big. So you were just naturally, were sure from, since you were a kid, that you're a painter, you knew that? I was told by the time I was 15 that I was an artist and I decided since I got a lot of approval for that, I would become an artist. I thought, ah, people must think I'm something. It made me feel like something. Good, so number three. List your five most important engagement technical productions. Uh, this list can include the show that this subject saw, as well as those they were involved yeah. in personally. Okay. Here's how it starts. When I was in grade seven, I saw a show called, an operetta called The Old Maid and the Thief. It was a touring production that came to my school. I was just absolutely captivated. And that spring, we started, because they knew that I was a natural born performer, I started appearing in the school plays. 
based on that particular shell. And I discovered I had a good ability to ad lib and do comedy. You have to have a sense of humor to be in this business, as you're aware. So it never hurts. When I came back to Toronto, I saw a show called Night Mother at the Tarragon Theatre. It was as if they'd taken a kitchen out of a house and plunked it on stage. It was so realistic. Now, I'd been doing theatre-related stuff before that, but I hadn't committed. I saw that show and I said, I want to do this. It was that show in, at Tarragon in 1987 or so. Then, Susan Benson's Figaro at Banff, where I learned how to do anal and dye technique and uh, created uh, figure paintings in the manner of uh, French artist Fragonard. Excuse me, what's the name of the show again? The Marriage of Figaro. Oh, yeah. I just made a research on her recently. Yeah. That's Susan why Benson? Yeah, I made well, a I did First, that's, that is them, that's why I just... I like... did the Susan Benson Figaro at Banff. Oh, cool. I remember that. Okay. I remember that. Yeah, so the, that, uh, the little figures, those are mine. Um, that was very influential to me because it made me realize, you know, what a gifted scenic I am. And from there, doing the industrials, you know, what I call industrials, like Lion King. I've done three Lion Kings, doing various jobs. Um, because Lion Kings are so formulaic, what that told me is I could work in the business and not get bored doing repetitious work because a lot of it's repetitious. And the last thing that was really influential to me was my design for the Baltimore Waltz at the Tarragon Theatre, which was the first major did in Toronto where I had an opportunity to absolutely put everything together as a scenic and a stage designer and prop designer and what have you. And it was simply breathtaking for me. It made me know that it was the thing I w and meant to do. Good. So uh, how has your area of theater changed over your career and time in business? Massively. Remember, as a scenic drop specialist, I do techniques that are no longer uh, as currently used like painting scenery, like soft goods, uh, for Opera Atelier, for example, the Baroque Opera, is uh, done in a manner that nowadays one can do on a computer and have it printed digitally. It's changed a great deal in that regard, same as apprenticing as a sign writer. Nowadays, within 10 years of my apprenticeship, everything was being done on cutout vinyl lettering. Technology has changed it immeasurably. Projection screens, everything that you can do digitally, what you can do with lighting, has shifted the scope of theater away from the things that I would traditionally do by hand. That's the biggest shift. Well, I don't have this question over there, but uh, do you think this profession has a future? Do you think it will not all become just printing? I think that... Anybody going into this business has always needed to be able to do one, uh, a great many things other than work in theater because theater is hard to sustain as a career. So it's not going to mean that you can't go out and do decorative finishes. It's not going to mean that you can't go out and do custom murals, that you can't go out and do, you know, custom sign painting, which is resurgence, incidentally, hand lettering. You know, because oddly, people are beginning to miss these traditional things. It's simply that your arena is going to be different. The place you work is going to be different. Nobody will ever fall out of love with hand work. Find that it's less useful in terms of cost and various other aspects of the business for certain sorts of shows. But... I, I can't see it shifting that much, but you always have to be very versatile. Okay, uh, what's your favorite thing about scenic painting? Process. When, when, when I'm doing my demonstrations in class. Yeah. 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 When I start to when I start to do something, 
I'm immediately taken away from the cares in my world and suddenly it's like I'm there and I'm thinking, whoa, isn't it fun to watch this paint do this and what happens if I, you know, you know, around here? That's my favorite thing. Yeah. Like, you have to like process to do this work. What's the hardest challenge you ever had? Like, maybe some hard challenge you had. A really, 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 really hard one. <laughs> Painting a hot dog van out in the field in the rain. <laughs> Seriously. I was doing it for a Carney, you know, Carney group. Carney people are a bit, uh, shall we say, on the edge. And then, and then they stuck me in the midst of this field because they didn't work it out well enough. So they were phoning me up at 2 in the morning, threatening me. That was hard. <laughs> Honestly, I had to, I had to, I, I went to an instructor and said, what did you, what should I do? And he looked at me and says, you're going to let them push you around? Next time they phone you at two in the morning, you just tell them to off. <laughs> that's hard. And that's what I did. And they left me alone. But that aside, the hardest thing that I ever did was trying to do a transparency for a show called, oh goodness, what was it called? Broadway, RSVP Broadway, and um, we had to do a full transparency, and we kept on getting the color wrong, and the designer would come after we'd finished it, and he'd say, no, 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 not what I wanted, and you know, you're spending a lot of money and a lot of time for the designer to turn around and say, this isn't what I want, when it looks like what they want, that, that, that was tense. And at least one person on that job actually walked away from it thinking they'd never work in this town again. That wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Which of your quotes do you think may are uh, making you successful in this area? I have a very strong work ethic. My work ethic is very developed, and my sense of service to the industry is very, very strong. And I... I know how to think quickly and adapt quickly. Adaptability. That's the most important thing. That's you one of the most important things. Interesting. Determination. Interesting. Mm -hmm. What helps you to grow professionally in that area? Being interested, honestly. If I am no longer engaged in this business on some level, I will not grow professionally. It's not a question of wanting to earn a living, you know, because one can earn a living in many, many ways. But growth happens because there are people around who are stimulating, who are doing things that are neat and engaging and want you to come and play. When would you say no to your employee or your company? Well, you know, I got hired uh, at one particular company, particularly because I know how to say no. The production manager called me up and said, we want you because you know how to say no. And I thought, that's intriguing. Well, the point is, I always look at it in terms of what can reasonably be achieved with the money and the time available. And if I see it as being not possible or too big a pain, I will simply go to the individuals and say, you know, this isn't the way to do it, which is another way of saying no. Come up with another way in which it can be done that doesn't compromise the idea. That's a type of no. That's a no. Yeah. And what's the best advice that you would give to someone who chooses to start a career in that area? I think that you need to have a job that you can pick up and leave if someone comes along and offers you a job that you really want. You need to be able to look after yourself economically because the business, especially when you're starting out, is very tough to sustain in terms of that. So learn how to tend to bar or drive a cab or wait tables, do something where you have a certain amount of flexibility, but if you want to be a scenic, learn how to paint an apartment. Learn how to flat paint. 
so that you can go into people's homes and take a job just painting walls and what have you come out with some money and then you can you can usually do theater and do that at the same time or clean houses house cleaning is another way that's how i supported myself painting houses cleaning houses that got me going basically a job that you can pick up and leave cool yeah that's actually it. Yay! Thank See, you so much. Thank you so much for interviewing us. Oh, it was really interesting. Uh, I look forward to uh, uh, seeing it or reading you? it. I'd love to read it. Okay, I will try to do my best. That's a guide. Don't say it.